The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the x everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our studio in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. Email x at x TV.com. On MSN Messenger, x TV at Hotmail.com. And our website, www.x we're going to be talking about miracles this hour, talking about angels, demons, and why and how some people attract demons to, into their lives. My special guest this hour is Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims, a native of Meriden, Meridian, I'm sorry, Mississippi, and... Um, Geez, on July 31st, the pastor will be celebrating 34 years of marriage to her husband. She has three daughters, one son, five granddaughters, and three grandsons. And Pastor Sims is with Mana Ministries, and their website is www.manaministries.net. And Pastor, welcome to the X Zone. Thank you. Um excited about being on your show today. Well we're, well, we're very happy to have you with us, Pastor. It seems that these times are truly a times of angels, miracles, and a rebirth, a resurgence in people looking for God. Why is that? Yes. Well, with the, the, the situations that are in our world, looking at the economy, um, the, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, um, people are looking for some help. They're mm-hmm. looking for some answers. They're wondering. And I've had several, we've had several who've called us and asked, you know, are, are we living in the last days? What's really going on here? Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is yes, we are living in the last days. And what we see happening around us now is only going to escalate and get worse than what we see. But is it really the end days, the end of the world, Pastor, or is this just the end of the old ways and the beginning and realization that there's much more to life than we understand and people are around the world are going to join in spiritual relationships as never before? Well, I know that we, with what we believe, there's a scripture, well, several, actually, mm-hmm. But I'm thinking particularly of Matthew 25 that talks about the different things that would be going on in the world during the end times. And, of course, the end times that just did not just now begin, but we are definitely actually in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I believe the end times started uh, right after the crucifixion. Yes. Pastor, stand by. You and I have to take our break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exo Nation Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims is our special guest. And she is with Mana Ministries in Lawton, Oklahoma. Their website, www.manaministries.net. My name's Rob McConnell. This is the Exo. We're going to be talking this hour to the pastor about miracles. We're going to be talking to her about divine interventions, demons, angels, and much more. Don't go away. We'll be back in two minutes. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. 
Join us for breakfast with a Southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Exxon Nation, my guest this hour is Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims, and uh, the pastor is with Mana Ministries. Their website is www.manaministries.net. And Pastor, I guess a lot of people ask these days, do miracles really happen? Uh, my answer to that is definitely yes, they do still happen. And I have been the recipient of several of them myself. I've been the eyewitness to many of them in my own family. My my husband, uh, Bishop Kenneth Sims, in October of 2003, he called it at UAB in Birmingham, Alabama. And this was all after having three brain surge- surgeries about a week prior to that. Um, he had an inoperable golf ball-sized tumor embedded in the occipital area of his brain. Mm-hmm. And there's really, <laughs> excuse me, there's sure. really too many medical problems that he was experiencing for me to name them here. But he coded and was placed on the ventilator, and we had at any, any given time a team of 16 to 23 specialists. After a few hours, the chief of these specialists called me in and said, uh, your husband is too far gone, you need to pull the plug, because oh, when they're this far gone, they never returned. Mm-hmm. But before this actually happened, my husband had warned me that it would and that no matter what they say, that I needed to stand and not back down, don't, not to pull a plug. And that was a difficult thing to do, but I had to put my faith out there and to do just that, to stand on that. And I insisted that they put a feeding tube in. And when I was allowed to go and see him, it was no doubt that he was not there. I mean, he was a big man, bodybuilder, muscle-bound, and he had just been reduced to, like, 140 pounds. He looked purple. He was, uh, eyes were walled. His, they were fixed. His mouth was just hanging open, and he really wasn't there, like they said. But I would go in every day, and 
I would pray over him. I would speak uh, God's word over him, and I just talked to him like he could hear me and he could understand me. And I would sing songs that my daughter and I, my daughter wrote them, but we sing together as a group. And I would sing those songs over him. And they they felt kind of sorry for me because they thought um, that I was just really in denial. But I was standing, just standing in faith, believing. And to make a long story short, on the third day, he rose. Mm -hmm. And when I walked into the room, into the ICU, he was in ICU, CCU, CICU, MCI, he had so many problems. And then even after he um, came back on that third day, um, the heart surgeon called me that afternoon and said, he's got some problems with the heart. And we're going to try to let him rest up a little bit because he's really not uh, able to bear this surgery, but we either do it or he dies. And I was just convinced that God did not bring him back for him to be out of here. And I was thinking about the words that he said. And uh, long story short, in the space of about six weeks, he had five (laughs) operations. He had one um, to the brain where um, they were trying to operate on a golf golf ball-sized tumor. And then he had to have a correction to that because the surgeon um, failed to tie off, um, uh, failed to cauterize some leaky vessels. So after having two blood transfusions prior to the surgery to try to get him ready for this, they allowed him to bleed for three consecutive days profusely. He never should have lived through that. But, you know, a miracle is, uh, well, even Webster describes it as an extraordinary event manifesting as a supernatural work of God. And there is no other way for me to describe what happened with him and that he died twice and he's been near death so many times. He's reinvented himself three times um, and he's just, he's motivational for anybody who gets uh, around him. Uh, they, in fact, we're, he's called the Iron Man because he just keeps, keeps coming back, but his faith is, is so strong in God and that's why He's still here. I mean, it's a miracle that he is still walking around because before the brain surgery, the doctor in Mississippi told me to anticipate that he would be a blind vegetable if he lived. But he, when they were bringing him out of surgery and taking him into recovery, he was just swinging those arms and legs and just fighting with everything that was within him. And I would tell, I told the medical doctors and nurses and professionals, my husband and I will walk out of here together. And that was even when he was considered dead by all intents and purposes. And uh, it was about three months later before we actually did walk out of there, but we did walk out. Tell me about angels. During your, your your ordeal with your husband's many medical problems, to the fact that the doctors basically told you to pull the plug and, and you stood by your husband's wishes and based on your husband's wishes and, and your belief, did any angels come to you? Did you see any angels? Did Was there any angelic help? I didn't actually witness seeing any at that point, mm-hmm. at that point during that time that we were in the hospital, but there were nurses that would come in. We had so many people coming in to our room for prayer, and they would say there's something, there's a a strong presence, a soothing, calming presence in this room, and even as sick as what he was, they just wanted to be around him. So they would come in sometimes 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and nurses would sit on my little cot in bed, and I would pray with them. Um share with them and and help them. And one night, my back was to the window where I was sitting on the cot, and the nurse was sitting obviously opposite of me, and I saw her look up and just in amazement, and it happened really fast, and she said she had never seen anything like that before. She said, an angel just went behind you. And that was encouraging to me because she was not a a believer like I was, Mm -hmm. uh, but she saw the the angel, and we had a um, another experience where 
a young lady who uh, was in housekeeping had come to my room shortly after he, he my husband coded, and she came in to comfort me. <clears throat> that was her intent. But I, I started talking to her about some of the things that I knew that she was doing, and I told her that my husband was in much better shape than she was because he had his his security, if you will, his, his life insurance and his life assurance. He knew where he would go if he should pass. Mm -hmm. But then I made sure that I let her know, but this is not his time to pass. And I, I introduced her to, to Jesus. And this young lady would just curse you up one side and down the other. She was a force to reckon with. But even the times that we went back to UAB, we had nothing but good reports concerning her change. But she came into the room one day when they had moved us to another side, and she was just bawling, just crying. Her brother had um, had an accident. He was on his motorcycle, failed to see a, a vehicle, a truck, stopped in front of him, and he was going about 55, 60 miles an hour, mm. and he hit it. Um, they brought him to UAB also. Uh, he wasn't expected to live. He had a lot of internal problems. His legs were broke. It was just, he was really, really messed up. And my husband at this time had had the, the um, open heart surgery and had been brought back to our room. And he was laying there in a lot of pain and really weak, and he called her over to his bedside, and he said, if you will listen to me and if you will do what I tell you to do, your brother will live. And he sent me... Uh, to the, I don't remember which intensive care unit he was in, but he was in an intensive care unit. So I went with her, laid hands on him, and just spoke God's word over him for a speedy recover, uh, recovery and healing. And he only was in the hospital for a couple of weeks. And, and they reported that on his way home, that he and the young lady that he was living with gave their lives to the Lord. When he got home, he started seeing angels, an angel walking around in the house. But he had never had an experience like that before, and he it, it frightened him. He wasn't scared of it, but he was mm -hmm. scared to tell somebody because he feared that they're just going to think that I'm crazy, and sometimes people do. They think you're on drugs or something when you say that you see into the spirit realm. But his three-year-old son saw it and was talking to his father about it, and that gave, then he told everybody, and they told me, and he, of course, was attributing everything to his new experience um, in the Lord. But my um, visitation was the highest visitation that one can have. It was not an angel. It was actually Jesus himself, and it was as a result of an experience that I was having with, with uh, demons. Um, in my bedroom, we were in Augsburg, Germany, and I woke up one morning and I could I could not move. I heard these voices. Mm -hmm. It sounded like it was about eight, eight or so entities at the head of my bed, to the side of my bed. They were not very tall. I could tell from the range of the voices that they were about uh, maybe three feet tall, but I could hear them. And they were laughing at me, and that was what got my attention. I thought, wow, they, they're laughing at me, and they're tormenting me. And then there was this, this hand um, that it was as if when a person, a husband and wife, say, are in the bed, and, and perhaps the husband will lay his arm over his wife, and it just kind of hangs over. Well, there was this arm. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't say anything. I was trying to say Jesus, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't come out because all, all my right, mouth Pastor, was like the, it had paralyzed me. Pastor, we're going to do a little bit of a cliffhanger here. We have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Okay. Please stand by. Thank you very much for joining us, Pastor. Explanation, Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims is my special guest this hour. She is with Mana Ministries, www.manaministries.com, and that's M-A-N-N-A-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S dot net. We're talking about angels, miracles, and much more. We'll be back after the news. Don't go away. 
This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back, Exxon Nation. Just imagine this. You're, you're over in Germany. You're laying in bed. You think it's about 8 o'clock in the morning. You hear these voices. Yes. The, this and this arm is over you, Pastor, and yes. and take it from there, Pastor. Okay, and it was like a um, yellowish uh, arm, mm-hmm. and I couldn't feel like anything laying, any presence or person laying on my body, but the arm was just hanging there over my left shoulder, and my face, my um, it felt like. It was trying to rip half of my face off because the fingers dug into my left eye, up my left nostril, and on the left side of my mouth, and it was just, it was a horrible or, ordeal. And even though I knew that I have power, Scripture says, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of Satan, I was so uh, horrified that I was not in faith, I wasn't thinking about I, that I, even though I would say scriptures in my mind, I didn't have the faith for it because I was just so overwhelmed by these happening, beca- happening. But prior to the the demons talking, this time they didn't they didn't manifest, but they were there. The voices were audible, uh, a language that I had never heard before. But my room, my bedroom, had filled with a mist. Uh, like a cloud, hmm. and there were voices. I could hear voices like coming out of the wall. Um, there was a lion's head that just popped out of the wall, and and I heard my husband's voice, but it was an impersonation because my husband was at work. He was in the military, and he was at work, so I knew, I knew that it wasn't him. And plus, it was foul. Everything that this voice was saying was very, very foul. And, uh, you know, I knew that it was supernatural. Like I said, it was it was horrible, horrific. But in the midst of all of this, in my fear, me being overcome by the fear, I felt my room shake like an earthquake hit it. And it just shook for several seconds. And then I heard this voice, this audible voice. And the voice was like, like Daniel spoke about in the Old Testament, uh, a voice that was like the voice of many, many waters. And it seemed to me, it's, it's hard to describe, but it seemed like the voice came from everywhere all at once. Stood at the foot of my bed, mm-hmm. it, it, and I knew that it was Jesus. It wasn't just an angel because of what he said and the way that he said it. Because I, and I keep reiterating this, I was just terrified. And all he said was, Behold, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And I knew that I had read that in uh, Matthew 28 and 20, and that's all that he said to me. He stood there for a few seconds, and then he just left. I be- And at that point, of course, I could move, I could talk, I could do everything, because when he spoke, 
I felt the demons just leave. I felt them, I could feel them turn their attention to him, just like my attention was on him. And they, this time, they were the ones who were terrified, and they, they quickly, hurriedly left the room. Why do you think... And I was still crying when my husband came home for lunch with his friend. It was difficult for me to talk about it mm-hmm. and tell him about it uh, because I couldn't stop crying. And really, this is only about my sixth time since 1979 even sharing it because I realize that I'm making myself vulnerable to a degree because some people, they think, well, I don't know what she was on, but it mm-hmm. uh, sounds like it was some pretty rough stuff. But, you know, I've never done drugs, never done alcohol. I don't, you know, dip, slip, slip, none of that. So it was actually happening, and we found out why. Why? There were were practicing witches in the area who knew that we were Christians, and they didn't want us there. The demons behind their belief system did not want us there, so they were trying. The best they could do was to torment us, in this way because they could not really hurt us. I mean, even though uh, I've had a demon get physical with me twice when we were in Augsburg, Germany, they couldn't really possess my body or do me any other harm. It was so, they were so intense, though, that my two-year-old baby at the time asleep in her room had was had started having demonic experiences. And, you know, she never heard us talk about it. She didn't know anything about it, but one morning she came into the room like she did every morning uh, to eat. Mama, get up, let's eat. And she said, this morning she she came to my bed and she said, Mama, a man was in my bed with me. And I looked at her and I said, well, what did he do? She said, he just lay there. And I said, what did you do? She said, I just looked at him. But from that point on, for it was several months before we could get her to sleep in the bed by herself. It was just one manifestation after the other, and it wasn't just with me. It was some of, with some of the other members in our churches, <clears throat> excuse me, members in our church that were having visitations and manifestations too, and for the same reason. It even They even went so far to put voodoo dolls on the church steps, we came out one, one day, and the pastor found voodoo dolls. But I, I've actually met two practicing witches that joined our church when we had a church here in Lawton in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And one of them, well, actually, both of them told us that you know, it works. The witchcraft will work on people, but if that person is truly born again, that it always returned to them. So I know that everything that they were trying to do, that there was really no enchantment against us because I knew at that time the power in my life. Earlier instances, I didn't know what was going on, but I knew that I wasn't crazy, Mm -hmm. and I knew that what was happening and what I was hearing and what I was seeing was real. I just didn't understand it. Now, can demons actually possess someone, Pastor? Yes, sir, they can. Contrary to maybe popular belief, they actually can. In fact, some of the old movies that came out years ago, like The Exorcist, yes. Exorcist, it's not um, it's not far from what's really real. And I've had several of my own experiences, and my husband and I together. But um, I remember once again when we were in Germany. This is one incident. We were having choir rehearsal, and a man walked in off the street. I will never forget his name. It was Joe Green. No one there had ever seen him, but we were excited. He was coming in, but once he came in, nothing went right. Uh, Rehearsals, nobody could hit the right notes, and it was just disturbing. So our leaders, her husband and wife team, uh, the camp, said, I I want everybody, go back to your seats, and Mm -hmm. we're just going to pray because I don't really know... We don't know what's wrong, what's happening. This hasn't happened before. And so we stood up and we began to, to sing and just praise God. And and the young man was behind me. He was the only one on that pew. And he started getting just really, really loud. And I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe he's a believer. But then his loudness started getting really, really strange. It wasn't just 
hands uplifted, praising sure. God, thanking Him for His goodness. It was just, it was uh, weird. Um, so he fell out, knocked the pews back, the pew that he was on, knocked that pew back, and the one that we were on jolted it. He fell out on the floor on his back and began to wiggle like a snake move. His body moved with all ease as if it was a snake itself. And this is what I witnessed with my eyes. So the camps and another brother, I remember his name was Ware, with four of us who were ministers who knew and understood what was going on. We knew that this guy was demon-possessed. He, His voice, there was a guttural voice that sounded as if even it was coming out of the pit of his stomach. And I remember Brother Kemp saying, commanding the demons to come out of him, and that this voice just shouted along, no, I'm not, I'm not coming out, he's mine, we own him. And his eyes, his eyes changed colors. There was a green gook that was coming out of his mouth and nose. Right. But we stood there and we told the demons that they had no choice. We were commanding them to come out and that they had to come out. And it was, I don't know, now maybe 15 to 20 minutes that they finally delivered him, but they jerked his body around as if to abuse him because they were mad that they had been found out and that they had to come out. And when he was free, he, I saw him shut his eyes, blink his eyes. When he got up, his eyes were the normal colors. He didn't say anything to anybody. He just walked mm. from the pew uh, area to the front of the church and got on his knees with his hands uplifted. And he said, he just kept saying, thank you, Jesus. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And that's just one incident. We, there are several. Pastor, what kind of? How do you protect yourself when you're doing an exorcism? Uh, because is it is it is there a possibility that the demon may leave the host and enter one of the people who were assisting in the exorcism? That can happen if that person is not covered by the blood of Jesus. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and if they don't know what the Word of God says, so yeah, it doesn't need to be um, a novice. Mm-hmm trying to do what he's heard or what he's seen somebody else do because that demon could actually enter into him and cause some serious problems to him. Um, so, yes, you need to know, but I, I stay covered. I stay covered with the, with the Word of God. Prayer is a constant in my life. Um, I even say, I plead the blood of Jesus over me, because I, I remember how when the children of Israel were in um, in exile, and they put the blood over the doorpost as protection. Well, even though we're not under the law, but what Jesus did, that was a foreshadow of what Jesus actually did. His blood covers us and protects us when we are truly under his shadow, and I did that. I, I did that when... I was 17. We were always religious. Mm -hmm. I was brought up religious, but at 17, I actually committed my life to the Lord. And that first, my first exorcism happened at 19 years old, because then I I understood the Bible. Because before, as I got read it, and it was still Greek to me. But once I said, Lord, I commit my life to you, I want you to live your life in me. Um, it was as if a neon light was flashing, and I understood things more clearly. My gosh, uh, Pastor, you certainly have had a life full. Uh, how is how is the how is the bishop doing now, ma'am? The bishop is getting stronger every day. He's the most determined man I have ever seen in my life, and anybody who sees him or around him will tell you the same thing. They call him the Iron Man, uh, Superman. He just, I know I know he's my husband, and, and yeah, I love him dearly, and he loves me dearly, and I could, you know, sound prejudiced, but I've had people ask me, um, does he still change the atmosphere in a room when he walks 
into it. And the answer to that is, yes, he does. He's one of the most motivational people I have ever seen in my life. He is so, so determined. And anything that he put his mind on, his heart in, he does it in the name of the Lord. In fact, my husband, with what he deals with right now, every day, he could check out any day and just go on to be with Jesus. And there's been several times in the last couple of weeks that it would look like that he would, and he would tell me, don't worry, baby, it's, I still have some things that I have to finish. Uh, there are people who are depending on me. I'm not ready to go yet. I'm not afraid to go. I could go because he's had mm -hmm. uh, two or three out-of-body experiences. Uh, he uh, was actually called up into the heavenlies. It's a, it's an, it was awesome just hearing about it. But he is just, he's my hero. He's my hero. Pastor, please stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Please, as I said, give my very best to the bishop and let him know that he's in our prayers. Thank you so much, Rob. We really appreciate you for that. Stand by, Pastor. Exonation, our special guest this hour is Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims. And Pastor Sims is with the Mana Ministries. The website is www.manaministries.net. That's M A N N A. M I N I S T R I E S dot net. The good pastor and I return on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X Zone from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. This is the X Zone Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www. XZBN.net Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. Next on Nation, our guest this hour is Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims. And uh, the pastor is with Mana Ministries. Their website is www.manaministries.net, and they're located in Lawton, Oklahoma. First of all, Pastor, thank you very much for sharing your time and and your your experiences with us here in the Exxon and around the world to our listeners. Um, I understand, Pastor, you have a new book coming out in 2011 entitled Eyewitness. Can you tell us what it's about, ma'am? 
it's, it has a lot to do with some of the things that we've been talking about here today, witnessing, being an eyewitness to the miracle of mm. my husband, who is really a continuous miracle. Um, my son, I had a dream, and my husband had a dream. I, uh, someone had a gun pointed to my son's head and pulled the trigger, and I, he called, and I wanted to warn him to be aware and, but it had already happened, and we had been praying for him. My husband was called out in the in the night to um, to pray for him, and mm-hmm. when we shared that with him, he said it already happened. He had witnessed someone get killed, oh, and they had actually put the gun to his head, pulled the trigger three times, and it didn't go off until they removed it from his head. Um, it, it, it's is, is several um, testimonies and the miracles and divine interventions that have taken place with my life, my um, immediate family, mm-hmm. my husband, my children, myself, my father, my mother, because uh, people wonder, many people wonder, do miracles still happen today? And um, absolutely, because I've been experiencing them for the last 34 years. Miracles are, are a constant in my life. Once again, Pastor, thank you very much for joining us. A great pleasure talking to you. And I do hope that one day in the future, you and I will have the opportunity of meeting once again here in the X Zone. I would love to, Rob. Thank you so much. Take care, Pastor. Blessings to you and your family. You have a blessed evening. Thank Thank you you. very much, ma'am. X Zone Nation, our guest this hour has been Pastor Patrick Elizabeth Sims, and uh, she is with menaministries.net. They're located in Lawton, Oklahoma. And if you'd like to drop a note to the pastor, P.O. Box 3605, that's Post Office Box 3605, Lawton, Oklahoma, 73502. You can also visit the, uh, the pastor online, www.manaministries.com. That's M-A-N-N-A-M-I-N-I-S-T-R-I-E-S. Net. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as the Exxon continues live and around the world from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. Don't go away. <laughs> 